Today we're in the Special Collections room in the Strozier Library of FSU Libraries. Um, this is our main reading room uh, where researchers come to interact with our materials. Special Collections and Archives maintains an extensive rare book collection uh, spanning back to uh, manuscripts from the 1400s uh, through 20th century publications. Uh, manuscript collections, um, like some of the material we'll see today from the Napoleon Collection, as well as Southern Business History, Scientific History, um, the collection of uh, the papers of Paul A.M. Dirac, who was a Nobel Prize winning physicist, or one, it was one of our core collections, uh, as well as university history, our Heritage Protocol Program documents, uh, the long history of Florida State uh, University and its predecessor institutions. In about the early 1960s, um, the, the Institute for uh, Napoleon and the French Revolution uh, was established here at FSU um, as an institute in the history department for the study of the French Revolution and um, particularly the Napoleonic Wars. One of the first professors um, uh, associated with that program uh, is a gentleman by the name of uh, Dr. Donald Horwood. Uh, Dr. Horwood is now Professor Emeritus at FSU. Um, he's a military historian. Um, his specialty is uh, the Napoleonic era. Um, and through his research, his travels around the world, um, his connections with collectors, uh, rare book dealers, but also uh, with scholars, um, the French government, um, he began to work with um, the longtime director of FSU Libraries, Charles, Charles Miller, and then his predecessors uh, to acquire uh, books and other kinds of materials for this collection to help support the graduate research of master's students and PhD students in the Institute. Um, and through this collaboration, um, not only through sort of purchases arranged by Dr. Horwood um, that the library pursued, but also through donations. Dr. Horwood has been a great donator of uh, materials. Um, over the course of the last 50 years, uh, we've amassed this collection of about 20,000 volumes, and we continue to collect. First example that I brought out from the collection, um, this is uh, the description uh, de la Egypt. Uh, my French is terrible. Um, uh, it's one of several volumes. Uh, these volumes were uh, rebound, um, published later um, in the 19th century. Um, but what they document is Napoleon's campaign in Egypt and artists' renderings of the landscape of Egypt, um, pyramids, architecture, um, architectural elements, elements of the hieroglyphs, um, Egyptian pottery, maps, um, and diagrams of the layouts of pyramids of different historical um, sites around Egypt. This was a way in an era where there was no photography. This was a way to document and detail um, the things uh, Napoleon and his army were encountering. They were also a way to account for um, the riches of Egypt that Napoleon uh, was hoping to bring back into France or to the empire and also used as points of study for uh, French architects uh, and artists. This piece is one, another uh, in a set from 1792, published during the French Republic era about the history of Louis the um, 16th. So this is the official French publication talking about the, the history of King Louis uh, and the start of the revolution. This kind of material, again, gives us a perspective on how the contemporaries or how the people who lived during the period of the revolution were writing their own history, uh, particularly in the period of the Republic for the purposes of uh, perhaps justifying the revolution and explaining to the people what, what occurred. We have many examples of uh, contemporary newspaper uh, publications. This is a set from 1807. These are important to the study and they're, they're important representations, again, of how what the activities of the empire were, the kinds of things that were being reported. Not only do they tell you about Napoleon's activities or what was happening in the battlefield, um, but the kinds of things um, in terms of the expansion of the empire, uh, news that was occurring at the day, um, and you've got a uh, imperial seal on the top of this one. I have another example of newspapers here. This is Le Moniteur Universel. This particular volume comes from 1800. We have a run of this newspaper 
um, through, I believe, the 18, 1812, 1813. This was one of the primary newspapers during uh, Napoleon's time. I think one of, the, one of the interesting things about this particular newspaper and how researchers are using this today, not only does it document um, sort of the activities of the army, what was occurring in the empire, um, but you get a lot of um, colonial reports from the colonies um, on trade. Um, so what, are, what commodities were worth at various points in time. Um, so people are using this kind of newspaper um, to look at not just what was occurring in France, but what was happening in the Caribbean and Haiti uh, and in other uh, colonial spaces. What I'm about to show you comes from um, the uh, General uh, uh, Pelé Clouseau uh, papers. Um, General uh, Pelé was um, uh, an officer um, in uh, Napoleon's army. Um, he worked closely with Napoleon in the field. Um, and one of the duties of a field officer uh, would be to transcribe correspondence um, uh, that was sent back and forth on the battlefield from Napoleon uh, to his generals and vice versa. This volume is a journal. Uh, it's a set of transcriptions from the European battlefield uh, beginning in 1806, going through 1811. And you can see you've got a table of contents, uh, hand transcribed, documenting what each of the letters was about, who it was from, who it was to, uh, the location. And then as you move further in, you have the actual transcriptions of the letters. Uh, again, documenting what the uh, history of the correspondence is, um, the uh, battlefield correspondence itself, and then a signature from Napoleon or from his general to confirm uh, that this indeed was the official correspondence. Some of your viewers may notice I'm not wearing white gloves today, um, as uh, I can assure them that my hands are quite clean. Um, as a part of our practice in sort of the evolution in handling uh, paper, historical paper materials, um, while white cotton gloves um, have been used and are certainly important to use with artifacts um, and photographs, uh, if you lose tactile sensation in your hands, um, it's easier to tear pages. Um, so uh, nice clean hands uh, and careful maneuvering of the pages uh, are, are the recommendation today. As a part of the collection, uh, the Napoleon and French Revolution collection, we have the published materials, we have original manuscript materials, and then we also have a number of uh, artifacts and ephemera objects um, that relate to Napoleon um, and to uh, his military campaigns and biography. One of our most popular objects, um, that, and many people just come to see us uh, for the novelty of this is the uh, is our copy of a Napoleon death mask. Uh, at the time, um, it was customary uh, to create a death mask um, after someone famous or powerful passed away, um, even if they were in exile. It's a bit of a controversy over the Napoleon death mask. Um, there were apparently two masks created. Um, the provenance of um, those masks and the, the arguments over which one is truly authentic um, continue today. Um, this is a mask, this is a copy of a mask that was said to be done uh, by uh, the doctor at Napoleon's bedside and then lost uh, or stolen uh, for a period of time and recovered uh, in the 19th century. We've looked at some representative pieces um, from later publications, uh, drawings of Egypt, from contemporary publications from the time, manuscript materials as well as artifacts. Um, special collections and archives at Florida State University Libraries um, are open to everyone. Uh, you don't need any per, uh, special permission uh, to come interact with these uh, materials or to do research. And we um, welcome students of all ages um, and uh, all levels of experience.